This is an introduction to a short film called Training Actors Who Have Visual Impairments at Central. It runs for eight minutes, and it's a series of interviews with students and lecturers at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, part of the University of London. The film focuses on two students, Arin Mehrabani and Samuel Brewer, who both graduated from the BA ONS Acting, Collaborative and Devised Theatre course in 2020. They speak direct to camera, or we hear their words over footage of workshops with their fellow students. Arian is 21. He's of slim build, six foot tall, with olive skin and short black hair. He wears a black t-shirt and tracksuit bottoms and has a guide dog, a black Labrador retriever. Sam's in his mid-twenties with pale white skin, shaved red hair and stubbly beard. He's just over six foot tall and describes his build as athletic. His muscular shoulders are emphasised by his sleeveless grey sweat top that reveals a tattoo on his right bicep. Their fellow students, a mix of men and women, are white, mixed race, black and Southeast Asian, and in their 20s. Two lecturers feature. Catherine Alexander is the course leader for the BA in acting, collaborative and devised theatre. She's white British in her late 40s, with large framed glasses and long straight brown hair tied back in a bun. Catherine wears a loose black top and black trousers. Her top is printed with a colourful cityscape and she wears a purple lanyard around her neck. Darren Oram is the principal lecturer in voice. He's white in his late 40s and has glasses, short brown hair and a trimmed beard. He wears a shirt printed with small pink and blue flowers closely spaced. He's never shown below the waist. We also meet Fozia Assad, who's Central's Disability Service Manager. She's British Asian in her early 40s, with light brown skin and long, straight, black, silky hair that falls loose from a centre parting. Of small build, Fazaya wears a loose black shirt with a small round collar. Like Darren, she's not shown below the waist. Student actors take part in a workshop in his studio. One, Arian Merabani, wears a clown's red nose. I'm visually impaired, but the training doesn't really view me as being visually impaired. It acknowledges it without making a big deal of it. I think it's important to note that it hasn't been easy for anyone. Um, it's been a learning curve. Me and Sam are one of the first visually impaired actors to go through a conservatoire training. And that means that we're, in a sense, writing the rule book and creating the standards of practice, which is really exciting. Sam. Getting accepted to a drama school as a visually impaired person, I was really like, what the hell? And it was one of those things where I, I didn't think it would happen. I guess my main concern was, uh, well, how accessible is the training going to be for me? Or how much am I going to be left behind? Am I, am I going to slow the other people in my ensemble down? Course leader, Catherine. So I think there's an implication that you have to lose things in order to train people with visual impairment or people with disabilities. And I don't think, I think you need to look at it in a different way. One of the things for me that had to change in my teaching was I tend to use a lot of ball throwing and that's clearly something that we, we can't use. Darren. But rather than looking at the, the exercises themselves and saying, well, how do I teach these exercises? or how do I adapt these exercises. One of the things that I really took from working with Alex Bulmer was to look at what are the learning outcomes, what are the things we're trying to achieve here, and how do I look at this group of people in front of me and ensure that everybody in the room can achieve the same learning outcomes. The training in terms of the accessibility has been really good because the staff have been accountable. Darren, our voice teacher, um, he was up the front of the room and he was like, oh, if you can't see me, move move towards me. As, you know, as a joke, I walked directly in front of him. And um, he was like, oh yeah, shit, thank you for calling me up. And, and it's just people being accountable in that sense. So that it's not just, okay, cool, here's how we can process the training. It's also, here's the language we're using uh, to make you feel comfortable. I don't think there's a one size fits all solution. So it really is about ongoing dialogue with individuals about what, what you need and how to make things work as best as possible. Fuzzier. 
We always want to make sure that students here at Central have a positive learning experience. We offer advice, support and guidance for students with disabilities and sensory physical impairments, specific learning differences such as um, dyslexia and also mental health conditions. Every disability is different and their needs will be different so they are the experts in their disability. They are able to then give that information to their disability advisor and um, we can then help put that support in place for them. Arian and his dog. When I first started taking my guide dog to rehearsals he hated it because if I was giving a good acting performance he wasn't happy because I wasn't being myself. But he now knows that I'm in a supportive environment where if we're in a rehearsal room that's cool, I can do whatever, I can be punched, I can fall on the floor, I can scream, I can cry, I can whatever, and it's cool. He knows that that's cool and he knows that everyone around me isn't actually out to hurt me and everybody's there in a supportive capacity. As a class and as an ensemble, we are a really rich group. All of our experiences have come together to make us really supportive of one another. And it means that when something happens that isn't right and something happens that we all sort of go, oh, that's uncomfortable. Like a visiting lecturer comes in and they aren't they aren't too aware of it or they try and introduce a game that me and Sam can't play or that isn't accessible. The group stops and the group lets the person know and it's so nice to have a supportive environment. You can go over there now, it's okay. Someone might do like a small proposition in a device piece and I might not notice that or, or I'll feel very lost. Like I'll watch something that people are like, oh, that was beautiful and I'll just be like, what the hell was that? Like, that made... I made mean, no sense to me, they were just walking around. But now I've got a relationship with everyone where I can be like, people just start audio describing for me. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, now I get it, now I know where we are. I think for actor trainers, the main thing is to not look at a disability as a deficit, is to look at the fact that we work with, always with a range of students with abilities. And that really it's about looking at what do we want young people to learn as actors? What are the skills we want them to develop? And how do we engage the full range of people that are in the room with us in order to achieve those learning outcomes? And once you start looking at it from that perspective, then actually anything becomes possible. And the course staff have been really supportive with understanding what I'm comfortable with in terms of how I'm comfortable marketing myself, how I'm comfortable putting myself across, because I am not a disabled actor. I am Arian, I am an actor. That's what I do. And I think it's a learning curve with the industry. I think Catherine has been incredible in preparing the industry for us and not making us prepare for the industry, if that makes sense. She's gone out of her way to go to events and go to panels and talk about both us, but also just disability in theatre. Jamie Bedard came to see Sam and Arian in a public production and he's an um, agent for change in Ipswich and he, he just said there is so much work out there for you guys. I have the capacity to play sided roles on stage. One of my eyes will just be slightly off focus, like I'm looking at where I'm meant to be looking right now. Um, and I think people have such a binary attitude towards it or disability where it's either your your you're like X or you're like Y, when there's such more uh, delicate nuance in between that sort of stuff. Like I, I'm quite scared of just having to play blind sages the rest of my life. But I think it's preparing sometimes that the industry might not be ready to work with you in the way that the conservatoire has worked quite hard to engage and, and give you the training you need without compromising. I now know to ask for scripts beforehand so that I can learn my scripts so that when I go into the audition I can give the best audition I possibly can and to ask for that as a thing that I need and not as a favour and not something that I'm super grateful for. I had, a, I had a casting the other day and they asked my access, my access requirements and I was so proud of the way I wrote it because it was just so clear. It was stuff like, oh okay I might not be able to, uh, if, you, if you say something to me like can you pick up that red cup? Without me knowing where that red cup is initially, I'm not going to be able to know where to pick it up. However, now that I now know where that red cup is, I can pick that up. First thing I'd say to any young person with a disability is apply. Acting schools are really keen to um, bring in as diverse a body of students as possible. And we're really interested in hearing from any young people who are interested in applying for us. But also perhaps open up a dialogue early on um, if there's a possibility to visit a school and look at it in terms of accessibility, to have a discussion around your needs, then that's something that's um, worth considering. 
um, even just emailing and getting in touch with the school in advance to talk about any questions you might have. When you look at the sort of outtake of drama schools over the past 10 years, it's clearly they've got a type. And CDT is saying that type is not getting work because that type is getting one job a month. And it's about representing all of us and representing all of our stories and finding a way to make interesting work with an interesting group of people. Credits, footage by John Montegrade, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, University of London. Audio described by Vocalise.